We are getting serious over here. The stakes, we've never been higher. Okay, that was really corny. But yeah, we're back. I got another video cooking under the radar and we are doing four ways to perfectly cook a steak in your own home. One of them, I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but we're gonna find out. Let's go. All right guys, so like I said, we're cooking steaks today. Now I know some of you guys, actually most of you guys probably don't have the uh, fancy equipment I got here. Some of you guys may not even have a barbecue, so we're not even gonna be barbecuing steaks tonight, or today. It's the morning time, what the heck am I talking about? But anyway, I got some beautiful strip loin cap off steaks, picked them up at Costco, just like a normal folk, not like a chef. So we are going to unwrap these guys first talk about the differences between strip loins and some other types of steaks and then we'll get into the actual cooking so I'm gonna bring these guys out onto the pan so we got four different guys here and they're still a little frozen just like you would if uh, you know you forgot to take them out of the freezer and you're rushing to cook them I'm really trying to make this just like I'm cooking them at home so oh yeah Shout out Carly Hooper. Got my own, uh, got my own mug now. Yeah, isn't that creepy? Back to it. Uh, so yeah, strip loins. Um, they are not naturally the most tender type of steak, but in my personal opinion, they are the absolute one of the more flavorful ones because of the marbling of fat inside. Uh, they got decent amount of intermuscular uh, fat which then transfers to flavor, transfers to moisture, transfers to all that beautiful goodness that you guys like in a steak, or that I like in a steak, that you guys should. But, yes, like I said, we are gonna be cooking them four ways. Number one, I'm gonna be playing with my new toy over here, a little gas burner, so I don't need to spin around all that fun stuff and go over there, but that's gonna be our number one. Then we're gonna go, we're gonna try straight in the oven. I'm gonna show you how to perfectly cook it in the oven. Then, I know some of you guys got panini presses or air fryers, but I don't have an air fryer here. We'll do that another time. But I do have a panini press, so I'm gonna show you how to get a perfectly cooked steak on a panini press. And then the last one. I know you all have a microwave, and I can't believe I'm saying this and doing this, but we're gonna try microwaving a steak and see if we can actually get it edible. But, yeah. Let's get into it and let's get this pan going. First of all, we need to season the steaks. So, like always, super secret recipe. I'm gonna sound really annoying when I say that, but I got salt and pepper and I got garlic powder. That's it. SPG is what we call it, a little SPG. Kinda like this show is a little SPG. I don't know what that means, but. Anyway, we are going to mix a little bit of the garlic powder into my already mixed salt and pepper, which is about a 25% pepper, 75% salt, and then we're gonna add in about another 25% uh, worth of garlic powder. Mix that in, so we'll get a nice little shot of that. Beautiful. And like I mentioned before in the brisket video, you want to keep that moving because the pepper, because it's a coarse grind, likes to start to float to the top because it's a little lighter. All right, so now that we have that mixed up, we are going to give a good sprinkle on there. Remember, these, these are like inch, inch and a half pieces of meat, right? And the seasoning that we're putting on the outside isn't really going to reach the inside. So what we need to account for is the fact that when you go and you bite into it, you want that seasoning from the outside to be enough to season your bite on the inside, if that makes sense to you guys. So just when you think you have enough on there, let's get another little sprinkle on there. All right, we'll cover that up. We're gonna let these sit for about five minutes. Well, I talked to you about the pan. 
So, this guy, I like cooking with gas. I find it's the most uh, controllable. A little bit of gas, a little bit of flame, a little bit of heat. Lots of gas, lots of flame, lots of heat. Electrical elements, all that fun stuff. They've got a lot of carryover. You know, one of those, not the completely flat glass top. You turn that off and for the next 20 minutes, it's still hot, it's still putting out heat and it's still transferring heat to your food. And you just, you don't necessarily get as good of um, an even cooking. With this, I turn the gas off. There goes the heat. The only leftover heat is that that's held in the pan. So what we're going to do, get this guy on. I do want it nice and hot to start. Uh, and basically what we're gonna be doing is giving it a nice good sear on both sides and then bringing the temperature down to finish that cook. And I'll, I'll tell you now, I'm all these steaks we're gonna be aiming about a medium rare, medium, uh, because that's the way I like to eat it. If you guys do not like it that rare, you just cook it a little longer. But I will show you guys, uh, you know, little techniques that will uh, will help you get a better juicy well done or better juicy mid well, even if that's what you like. So as this guy's heating up, I'm just gonna go rinse my hands quick and give them a wash. We'll come back and we will continue where we left off. All right. So you will notice your pan is hot enough. When you, and I'm not sure if you can see this, maybe Josh, you can zoom in. When you see this smoke, at that point, you want to bring your temperature down a little bit. Now on the electric stoves, you'll want to bring it down a lot more because again, you've got that carryover cooking. Now that we're here, I am going to give it a nice spray. Pam, great stuff. All it is is aerosol oil. And now that we have that nice smoke going, bring it right, right down. We are going to bring our steak back. I had a pair of tongs. There it is. Now, we are gonna take this guy. Remember, like always, away from you. Move it around, make sure it doesn't stick. Now we want to get a nice sear and caramelize the outside, which is basically browning. Simple term. Give it a nice uh, brown color. I, I, I always tend to say caramelize, but a nice brown, you almost, uh, like when you're toasting a marshmallow and you aim for that like perfect brownness around there, um, that's, that's caramelization, it's just a fancy term for, uh, for cooking it until it looks good. So as we're going here, we're gonna keep looking. You'll notice uh, here, you start to see some of that browning around there. That's, kind of, that's really what we're wanting. So we're gonna let that sit there. And now that my steak has been in there a bit, I am going to bring the temperature up a bit because this steak was cold going in there and it's going to uh, take a lot of the heat out of that pan. And in order to keep it going, we're gonna temp, and that's called tempering the temperature, tempering the heat. All right, so once we get that nice color on there, we are going to flip it over. But well, while that is going, um, let's get our other steaks going. So we got three more. I've got a panini press behind me. And what we're going to do is a simple, take this guy. I've got this guy at a nice hot temperature. Again, you'll see the smoke. And we are going to, before I do that, give it a nice spray. And we are going to just, we're listening for that sear, that What I am going to do, most of the weight, it depends on the panini press, but most of the weight will come from the front end. We don't want too much weight actually on the steak and we don't want to squeeze too many juices out. So we are going to move it back as far as we can. That's two out of four steaks. Let's take a look at our pan. Now this is a, conve a, a convection oven. Yeah, shut up. This is a convection oven. Uh, 
if you only have a con conduction oven at home, which means it doesn't have a fan in there, you are going to want to add 30 degrees. So set it to 475 if you can. Higher the temperature, the uh, better caramelization around the outside we are going to get. This guy is already pretty preheated, so we're just gonna throw it in there. Get it going. This last guy. I cannot believe that I'm actually gonna do this. But we're gonna microwave it. So, we're gonna get a plate, simple as that. And we're gonna start with three minutes. See how that goes. This is the experiment side of things because I've never done this. I never want to be able to, or never want to do it again. But for the sake of science, we're going to do it. So I'm going to go grab a plate, get it in the microwave, and I'll show you the outcome. All right. While that's in the microwave, this guy's still going. Keep, keep a check on it. All right. That's few ways you can figure out uh, if uh, steaks are done. Easiest way is to go by temperature. Um, usually uh, for, not usually, but for a medium, you're aiming around a, a 140 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature, and you can measure that with uh, just a, a basic uh, temperature probe. I like to go by touch, um, just the way I work. And that's one way you can tell is with your hand. So if you feel the base of your thumb with your hand wide open, that's gonna be a similar texture to rare. Touch your, uh, what, is that an index finger? That's uh, some, whatever. Human anatomy is not my forte. <laughs> index finger, that will m imitate uh, medium rare. Middle finger, medium, next finger, medium well, and your pinky. That'll be uh, just very similar to a well done. Other way you can tell that you're getting close to a medium is you will start to notice little pools of meat juices actually seeping through and sitting on top. That is a very, 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 very good indicator that you are right close to a medium and you want to actually pull that right off as you see that. Now, that being said, in the oven, and on the panini press, we are not going to be seeing that. So, uh, internal temp is pro or touch is probably the best way to go. This guy, let's give it another flip. All right, this guy we are not far off of. If uh, Josh, you can see, we had a, a little bit of blood coming through. So we'll wait for a couple more uh, drops to show up and we will pull that guy off. Now with steaks, you do want to let the steak rest for as close to the same amount of time as you cooked it in order for those juices to redisperse. Because we have put this on a very hot piece, uh, hot pan, and that's it's kind of shocking it. And we need to let it chill out and relax before we eat it. Grab that microwave one. It's there. It's cooking and it's uh, it's almost there as well. Only difference with this guy is it doesn't have much of that caramelization around the outside. And even if I flip it over, it just looks like you threw it into a steamer or boiled it, which is not that very desirable. Uh, because like we all know, we eat with our eyes before our mouths. So this guy is still on the very rare side. Yes, we are gonna throw it back in the microwave for probably two more minutes. And then to finish it off, we're gonna hit it in, a pan, in the pan and just kind of sear it, get that nice caramelization around there. See if we can make it look good. All right, two more minutes in. I'm gonna flip this one last time and that guy will be very close to being done. The steak in the oven is actually going to take the longest as it is not in direct heat. So direct heat is anything that's, wow that's hot, did not expect that. Anything that is the direct heat is like gas on a pan, panini press, deep fryer, 
or microwave. On the other hand, I believe our panini press steak is going to be done. I'm gonna pull it off and we're gonna start let that, letting that one rest. All right, let me take a picture. It smells good. Hopefully it tastes good. I mean, it's steak. The only one I'm worried about is this microwave one. I don't know how that's gonna taste, but let that one sit. So it, it was cooking in probably about a good eight to 10 minutes. So we're gonna let that guy sit there for about eight to 10 minutes. And oh, not sure. I think that one's gonna be closer to medium well, but it's all good. It's still gonna be tasty. This guy, yeah, let's pull this guy and we're gonna do the same thing. Let it sit, turn our pan off. Now let's check in on how our oven one is doing. So we're gonna pop this oven open. All right, so you'll notice it actually looks pretty similar to the uh, to the microwaved one right now. Um, but that's again because it's not a direct heat. We're not getting that surface caramelization of the hot pan or the hot cast iron of the uh, mini press. So we're well on our way. We're probably looking at another 10 minutes in this oven. And then like the uh, um, like the microwave one, we are gonna hit it with a sear and just kind of get that caramelization of the surface, which makes it desirable and tasty. So at this point, it's a waiting game. We're gonna pull our microwave one, then wait for this oven one to be done. Bring them all together. We will take a look at some of the differences, and most importantly, we're gonna taste them. And we're gonna taste them, like Josh and I, and. And, and Heather, because we shout out to Heather who's here taking pictures. Um, but yeah, that, that's the whole reason we do these videos is to taste the food at the end, right? Just kidding. They're for you guys. So if you like it, like and subscribe down below. Lots of videos coming out. I think eventually, or in the next couple weeks, we're going to jump to two videos a week. That's what I'm hoping. Just get more content out for you guys. All right, so like and subscribe. We will see you in a few minutes when all our steaks are on the cutting board. All right, we've got our steaks. They are rested. They are all looking pretty good, actually. Uh, so now let's see how they cooked, see how everything turned out. And let's start with our panini press, one here on the left side, your right. So. Before we actually look at the inside, let me know in the comments below which one you thought looked the best before we actually cut in. So let's take a look, see how this cook turned out. I am, ooh, look at that. Let's get this onto a plate here. Spread that out. These two for last. Let's go with our, our pan seared one. This one I'm gonna guess is a little bit more rare, more on the mid-rare side. Look at that. That would be a perfect mid-rare right there. All right, so now we're gonna cut into the uh, oven steak. I'm gonna guess this is nice close to a medium again, just by the feel. So let's take a look. Look at that is a beautiful medium. Look at that color. And get that on the plate as well. All that aside, really want to I mean I really want to see how this guy turned out microwave I think it was five minutes total 
and then hit in the pan. All right, let's just do it. First cut, not looking too good. You know what, we do have some pink there. I mean, it works. Is it perfect? No. Would I do this on the regular? No. Um, is it edible? You know what, yeah. If you don't have any other way to cook a steak, yeah, you could do it in a microwave. But, you got three other options that I think are a lot more valuable, a lot more beneficial. Um, so let's, you know, let's give them, let's give them a try. Um, and yeah, Josh, I want to see what you think. Let's see what you think, and same with Heather. All, All right. right. So, so I am gonna, gonna let, let you see how short I am. But we, we got to see how these steaks taste. taste. So, so grab, grab a fork, fork guys, guys. All right. and just have at it. You know this, so this one is our panini press. We've got in the middle our pans fried, and then our oven and our microwave. So I'm gonna, I wanna get a piece of this guy. If you want one that's not as rare, you go here. Believe it or not, that pan fried one is not, I don't, it's not as good as I usually make it. Mm. I think I'm, I'm biting into some fat, but it's definitely got the flavor, but not as fall apart as I'd like it. That no one's the panini um, one, right? No, that was pan. That, this, that's, this, that's the pan fried. This is the panini press. Pan fried's good to me. All right. And then, so Heather says oven one's good. We both tried the pan fried. Yep. We're both now on to the panini press. Actually, we're all, all three of us are on to the panini press. Which, if this is good, that could be a great way to cook a steak at home. It's pink, it's nice and medium, but it's not that juicy. It's just been sucked out. Mm -hmm. It's just been pressed. All right. Well, I think Josh and I need to taste the oven. You need the pan, and then we'll all go to the microwave. All right. Cheers. Cheers. So far, I'm going to say juiciness. This guy has it. Wins for juiciest. I mean, it is also a little bit more rare. These two aren't far off from each other, I'm going to say. The panini and the oven are roughly the same. I think the oven's a little bit more juicy. Yep. Yep. And I do like the crust of it mm. on these sides a little bit better, but that's about it. Yeah. So I mean, if I if I had to rank, I would go one, two, three. So pan fried number one, oven number two, and panini press number three. So let's see if microwave follows suits, follows suit, and tastes the number four. Oh dear. Oh no. Believe it or not, that's more juicy than this one and this one. Definitely. No, no, that's pretty dry. I just, it tastes more juicy to me. 
Hey all, Chef Radar's editor here, Josh. Uh, unfortunately, the end of this video was cut off from the audio, so I have to make this little ending for you guys. But that's alright, alright? So here's the thing. When it comes to the four steaks, we all agreed on the same verdict. That the pan seared was the best, and then the oven was number two, and then we went actually with the microwave for number three, and then the panini press for number four. But uh, all steaks were, were, of course, edible. They all taste delicious. And, I mean, you could follow the same recipe when you're at home. Um, just follow the steps, and you can honestly make the steak however way you want. Now, for this video, I, if you enjoyed, definitely hit that subscribe button, as well as hit the like button, share with your friends. We would really appreciate it. And as well as, uh, if you're wanting more videos, definitely go check them out. We have a couple cool ones. I'd personally recommend the uh, brisket or the crunch wrap video. But uh, with all further ado, thank you all so much for watching this video, and have a fantastic day.